Hey, this is Will. So in this video, I'm going to tell you step by step how to hire a virtual assistant. This video is going to have a ton of value. In this video, I'm going to tell you when exactly do you need to hire a virtual assistant? What are the different platforms? What you really need to understand about these platforms? what you can do to get a good virtual assistant, what your job posting should look like, how exactly do you choose your virtual assistant, how do you work with your virtual assistant, some example tasks, and a bunch of other really useful stuff. So make sure to watch the whole video as there's going to be some really important information all throughout the video. Also, every single week I give out one of my courses completely for free, so so just press thumbs up on this video and leave a comment down below to enter the competition. Also, we have some really useful freebies on my website. So all of the links down below in the description. Now let's jump straight into the video. So when do you hire a virtual assistant? A lot of people, I feel like they are afraid to hire a virtual assistant when they're just starting out. They don't feel like they need to hire anyone. But honestly, I would say hire as soon as possible. Really what you need to do is calculate your hourly rate and if it's higher than what the virtual assistant would charge, then just hire the virtual assistant. A simple example of this is if let's say your hourly rate is $20 and the virtual assistant that you would hire, their hourly rate is $5. That means if you hire a virtual assistant, you can get four times more done because instead of your one hour, they can work four hours. I think really the way you need to think about this is you have the one resource that you can't really buy more of, which is your time. But outsourcing and hiring virtual assistant kind of lets you buy more time because you are extending that time again instead of you doing work for one hour if you pay someone who has a lower rate that they charge you can get more work done and then you save up a lot of time that you can spend on other things also what a lot of people forget to consider is that you don't actually need to hire people full time. You can start out with hiring someone part time or you can actually have just set hours per week. Let's say you agree that the virtual assistant is going to work 10, 15 hours per week for you, something like that. So where exactly do you find virtual assistants to hire? There are a few websites and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this, but I would say one of the main websites that I like quite a lot is onlinejobs.ph so you can find some really cheap Filipino freelancers that are really good. Fiverr is another option that's usually more used if you just need some quick gigs done for you. And then obviously you also have Upwork and Freelancer where you can find a ton, a ton of different freelancers from all over the world. So one thing that you have to understand with these websites is that most of the platforms usually charge around 20% fee. And the thing is, you don't really see this fee because the fee is being charged on the freelancers side. So it just looks to you that you're paying a certain amount of money to the freelancer and that is it. But actually the freelancer is only receiving 80% of what you are paying. And it doesn't matter that it's being charged on freelancer because at the end of the day, the overall cost of the project increases. So this is the case if you're using again, Freelancer, Upwork, Fiverr, all of these different platforms. That's why I also like a lot onlinejobs.ph because there you only have one time payment to post your job posting. And then once you find the freelancer, then you can work directly with the freelancer and then you don't have any additional fees. So just to illustrate this better, if let's say you have a project that in total is going to cost you $1,000, then you're going to basically be paying 
$200 for the platform and it doesn't matter that it's on the freelancer side because the overall project is going to cost you $1000 and if you would work directly with the freelancer then that same project would cost you $800. So if we take this versus something like onlinejobs.ph there you only pay one time fee of $69 and then you get your job postings and you find your freelancer and then you are working directly with freelancers so you don't have any of those additional fees. So if you have just a very small gig perhaps that you want to get done for you, then probably it's the best to just go on Fiverr and get that done. However, if you are going to work with a freelancer for extended period of time, then you can see how in the longer term, and it's not even that long, honestly, how it's going to pay off basically even if you are just going to pay $500 in total for the freelancer that already is going to be more expensive using the platforms than just going on onlinejobs.ph and paying one-time fee and then working directly with a freelancer there is the good side of these platforms as well because these platforms they have escrow accounts and they basically handle all of the different issues so if you have some misunderstandings with the freelancers with your virtual assistant that you're working then it's basically the platform that is going to decide who is right so there's not going to be a situation where someone does you wrong and they just take the money and that is it the platform is going to help you out in these situations so this is part of why you're paying these fees and also part is basically just the database of the different freelancers at the same time i honestly don't think it is that big of an issue especially when it comes to hiring a virtual assistant i never really had any major issues when it came to payments and all of that kind of stuff and you can always tell the freelancer that they have to put in a certain amount of work first and then you pay them after so you're not really afraid that someone is just going to run away with your money another thing that you have to understand with these platforms is that a lot of people don't realize is if you go on fiverr yes they do have said gigs that people do however you can also ask for a custom gig so it doesn't have to be necessarily just that one package if you want something a little bit different you can always ask people and most of them are going to agree and do a custom job for you so now how exactly do you get good freelancers first of all you have to sell your job so a lot of people think that you just post your job and then everyone will want to apply for this job and everyone will want to work for you but you have to realize that the really good freelancers and especially if they come with for a pretty cheap rate you're trying to hire them for a cheap rate they are also getting a lot of different options to choose from because other people want to hire good freelancers as well, good virtual assistants. So really, you have to think about it as a little sales page where you are selling why exactly they should choose your job instead of someone else. So there are a lot of things, honestly, that you can do here to help yourself out. But first of all, be very clear of what exactly are going to be the responsibilities that your virtual assistant is going to have so they know exactly from your job posting what it entails and what their day-to-day -day is going to look like more or less you also want to include some of the stuff of what they are going to learn so it's not all about what they need to do and that's it because everyone wants to progress so if you can actually paint them a picture that while working for you they are actually going to gain a lot of new skills that later on they can get better jobs and they can charge higher rates for then obviously they are going to be more willing to work for you also in general just try to include some benefits why exactly should they choose you instead of someone else why perhaps if you are just just starting out why is it better to work with you rather than with a big company perhaps you are offering flexible schedules so people can work on their own time that is i know a big benefit for a lot of virtual assistants that they are looking for that they don't have to do that 95 they can choose their own hours 
also perhaps because you are just a very small company, you're just starting out, you are actually going to be more acceptable of different ideas. So people can actually participate more within your company and they actually feel more appreciated, more involved and all of these kind of things compared to working for a big company where no one really cares what you think. If you're finding this video useful so far, make sure to smash the thumbs up button. I would very much appreciate that. So when it comes to actual job posting and I go in depth about this in my course, if you're interested, links down below, but a few things, few essential things to mention here. First of all, you want to have a specific title. So I know that might sound strange because not everyone is going to apply if you have very specific title, but that is exactly what you want. You don't want hundreds and hundreds of people applying because remember, you will need to go through these applications. So if you have people that are actually really good fit and they're looking for something exactly that is your job, then you're going to benefit of having just those people applying for your job rather than a bunch of random people applying. So instead of perhaps saying, hey, I'm just hiring a virtual assistant, say I'm hiring a virtual assistant for wellness e-commerce store. So then you will know that, okay, some of the virtual assistants, they might be more interested in e-commerce and perhaps some of them are actually more interested in wellness and perhaps they already have a big knowledge. So then when you're working with them, they are actually going to be able to help you out more because they are already involved in that specific niche. Another thing you can do is show that you are actually a growing brand. So show the freelancers that they can basically grow with you. So again, instead of something like you're looking for a virtual assistant for wellness e-commerce store, you can say looking for a virtual assistant for fast growing wellness e-commerce store, because that shows that if the company is growing fast, they are going to grow fast and they are going to be able to move up the ladder as well. And eventually perhaps they're going to get paid more. They're going to learn new skills, so on and so forth. Also, an important thing I understood is that you want to replace tasks with responsibilities. So honestly, whatever the job is, as simple as it might actually be, everyone wants to feel important so just try when you put everything in words just try to use words that actually show that people are going to be given responsibility instead of just doing simple tasks and that is it so now how do you exactly choose the best applicants Again, in my course, I have in-depth thing where I show exactly how I create the different lists and go through all of the different things. But just to give you an idea, first of all, you want to create a list and on the list, obviously you want to know who is sort of potentially you think is the best. One thing to keep in mind is that honestly, portfolio and CV isn't enough. Some people just like to hire or if they see that someone has a lot of experience, someone has done, if you're hiring, let's say virtual assistant, that's going to help you with a lot of design. You see they have really nice portfolio, but honestly, until you actually work with someone, you can't really judge them. It can be a little bit of an indicator whether someone is potentially good or not, but definitely don't rely on just portfolio and a CV. One little thing you can do is with your job posting, you can include a little test task. It shouldn't take more than 10 to 15 minutes because a lot of people, especially if it's better virtual assistants, they might have other offers, so they might not want to do your test task if it takes too much time, but usually 10 to 15 minutes isn't too bad. And here you can actually test out people and see how are they performing because everyone has exactly the same task. So it's very easy for you to see how are they doing this task and that can help out already to eliminate 
a lot of people. Also, what you want to do is you want to test out the top freelancers that you want to choose. So I would say definitely use a time management software. I think that is one of the best investments you can do for your business. And I will leave some links down below in the description of the time management softwares that I personally use and recommend. And what you want to do is just give the same task to a few different freelancers and just see exactly how much time it takes for them to perform those tasks. And with these time management softwares as well, by the way, you can actually take screenshots of their screen so you can see how about they go to perform that task as well, because that is also important. And that is all going to help you out to choose the best freelancer for you. And I definitely, definitely advise to test out the freelancers because once again, you can only really realize how someone is when you actually start working with them. So now a few things that will help you out when you are actually working with your virtual assistant. So the first and probably the most essential thing is you need to have a project management software. You need everything organized. Yes, you can use different tools to chat with them, whether you're using Slack or even Skype, or you can really use anything, but you do want to have one database where you have all of the information and you can see what is being done, when, what are the different priorities, so on and so forth. So again, I will leave some recommendations for project management softwares that I use down below. And most of them are actually completely free to start out with. So you really have no reason why not to use one. Another super useful tool, and this is if you're working with freelancers directly, because most of the time they are going to be from a different country and you can use transfer wise, which I absolutely love. What this tool allows you to do is just make transfers to your freelancers. So in different currencies with really good exchange rates, almost the same that you see when you type in the exchange rates on Google, because most of the banks, they charge you a lot. They have really bad exchange rates and they also have additional, really expensive additional fees and I have bank accounts in different countries and none of them are as good as TransferWise. Uh, by far, TransferWise gives me the best fees. And over time, believe me, this is going to add up and you're going to save up a lot of money. Another important thing, if you are going to hire someone part-time, uh, most likely they are going to be working with other people as well. And sometimes that can be a little bit problematic because if, let's say, it depends on your business, but if you get new clients or you just get a lot of orders, whatever, whatever it is, sometimes you might get a lot of work at once. And if your freelancer is busy with other people they're working for, they will not have the time to do something that's super urgent and then you are in trouble. So what you can do to fix this or to avoid this is ask your freelancers to be available if necessary at least certain amount of hours per day or per week. So they'll give you this promise and then if you get a lot of work, then they don't have any excuse to say that, oh, they're busy with something else because they promise you, let's say that at least they're going to be available for five or 10 hours every week for you if there is something urgent. Another thing you can do to avoid this problem is we'll have more than one freelancer available that you can contact to do some work. Again, if you are hiring people part-time, then this shouldn't be that much of a trouble because you're not paying a set fee every single month. So you don't feel like you always have to give work. So you can have a few different freelancers on your list that if one freelancer is too busy with their other work, then you can contact another one and they are going to help you out. And lastly, as you start working out with a virtual assistant, I think it is very important to create a list as you're doing your work, as you're working on your business, see what tasks do you have that are repetitive tasks that need to be done either every day, every other day, even every single month, whatever it is. 
start putting start making a list where you put all of these different repetitive tasks and then start creating basically tutorials for your virtual assistant how exactly can they do these tasks so then it becomes easier for you to outsource all of these repetitive things so to give you a few example tasks that you can give to your virtual assistant because you know sometimes people are a little bit confused of they don't know what exactly to do where to start and so on and so forth so first of all one of my favorite ones is online research so that usually takes a lot of time and it is important but you have to trust your virtual assistant so online research managing social media is something that you can outsource very easily sorting out your emails uh, customer you can even do something like customer support uh, data entry is something also that you definitely want to outsource you don't want to do yourself something like keyword research you can even do cold outreach if that makes sense for your business so these are just a few examples but Honestly, you can outsource pretty much anything. If there's something that needs to be done, you can outsource it. At the end of the day, maybe your virtual assistant will not quite know exactly how to do the task, but if you manage to explain to them how to do the task, then you can just outsource that. So if you're not sold yet that you need a virtual assistant, then just a few things to think about. First of all, the benefit, the main benefit I would say of a virtual assistant is that it helps you to scale faster. You can't really build out a successful, a big business if it's just you working on the business and that is it. Because again, you are limited of how many hours a day you have. And by having a virtual assistant, you can extend those hours and you can scale much, much, much faster. So the sooner you start hiring virtual assistants, the sooner or the faster you are going to scale. Another amazing thing is that you don't need to do the same repetitive tasks yourself. This is honestly probably the main reason why I hired virtual assistant because I love what I do, but at the same time, there are certain things that I absolutely hate and I just cannot be bothered to do. And thanks God for virtual assistants because I don't need to do those things anymore myself. And lastly, the important thing to understand is that if you are outsourcing a lot of things that you're doing day to day, you can really start focusing on the most important things. I even apply the 80-20 principle here where 20% of what you do out of all of your work is going to bring you in 80% of the results. So you really want to focus on that 20% and then the rest 80%, it might be important, it might be still necessary, but you probably can outsource all of those 80% and then focus on those 20% that is actually bringing in the most for you. So I hope you find this video useful and I hope that you are going to end up hiring a virtual assistant as I said I think it is an essential part of every business and really try to get one as soon as possible it's going to make your life a lot easier as I said I have some special discounts and bonuses and whatnot so all of the useful links down below in the description if you found this video useful make sure to smash that thumbs up button subscribe to my youtube channel put on those notifications so you see next time I upload a useful video like this Stay awesome and I'll see you soon.